Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another tutorial in web methods and in this time we are going to look at this guy XML okay the XML parsing that's what we are going to look at it okay and there are a set of standard principles that you follow within web methods how to read an XML how to parse an XML and the reason why we say standard is because <clears throat> under WM public this is what anyways they offer see so you need to deal with this guys okay in one or the other way whichever coding principles that you take in um, the one that I that you're seeing right now in the code see this 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 and this guy this guy all of them will be same in whichever company that you work on in web methods or wherever you work on almost it will be similar okay I've, <coughs> I've written in two ways one is load from the internet other from the local file so let's start with the local file first and then what let's see what we have to do what we are going to establish out of this so as usual let's debug and then try to understand the definition of each of it okay so the first step uh, yeah one more thing guys this code will be available for download and anyways if you are trying to implement while I am performing the demo make sure that you implement this try catch block okay so let's just implement that now <coughs> next step uh, let's go ahead. So set XML data what I'm doing here I've taken an input output here okay and I've defined this I've hard coded as XML data double click on this click on the three dots you have this XML all I've done is taken this control C control V here that's it okay that's it now <clears throat> the next step is we're converting that XML string to a node an object see we are passing this XML to this XML data and that becomes the output okay and here I've set a variable called is XML to true it's obvious right the XML is has to be true see here it's true it's not false it's true that's what I've done next <clears throat> and I've converted this XML to an iterator now what is an iterator so iterator or iterator however, however you pronounce is used when you're actually performing a looping logic okay looping logic now what have we done here here we have taken that node which we converted here and <clears throat> we are passing it here over here and then we are trying to get the iterator and there are two sets that I've added here as well called as criteria and moving window what I've supplied in the criteria criteria is nothing but I've supplied as CD CD is nothing but this guy see we're looping over this CD right so we have set it out and there's a thing called as a moving window I've set it to true but before that let's see what is an iterator see, this as usual <clears throat> let's go to the documentation and try to understand see it says that it creates and returns a node iterator okay what does it mean a node iterator iterates over the element of node descendants of an XML node okay see descendants of XML node a node iterator iterates over the element this is the catch okay and returns the element node that satisfies the given criteria obviously my given criteria is CD it will satisfy the client application or flow service uses the <coughs> get next XML node to get each node in turn so once you iterate they're saying that get XML node to get each node in return see here we have used it but this time it will be under repeat okay I'll tell you the reason behind it okay so <coughs> what is it saying XML node iterator is useful for loading and parsing documents on demand large or slow documents need only be loaded as far as needed to get the desired data node iterators are useful for providing service as the pertinent information in demand in, in the document that arrives rather than the first waiting for the entire document to load please understand this statement node iterators are useful for providing services as pertinent information in in the document that arrives rather than the first waiting the entire document to load this service is primarily intended to deal with large documents or documents that arrive slowly okay now we also defined a moving window in the moving window it provides a moving window mode in which the only node that is resident in the memory in the last node to be returned okay so here remember this moving window provides provides a node iterator provides a moving window mode in which 
the only node the only node that is resident in memory resident in memory is the last node written by last node written by this um in this mode in this in this new window mode when this get next xml node is called all the nodes preceding the newly written node becomes invalid see all the nodes preceding the newly written node all the nodes say node 1 node 2 all the nodes all the nodes preceding the newly written node this is a newly written node okay and this becomes invalid including all the previously nodes okay so just set it up across saying moving window to true um it also says when operating in moving window mode the node iterator skips the xml nodes that do not match the criteria see when operating in moving moving window mode the node iterator skips the xml node that does not match the criteria okay so yeah that's about the node iterator um moving window now let's see <clears throat> the next step is what does it do it gets the iterator okay you can't read this but still now you need to repeat over that i'll tell you the reason behind repeat see let's get into this now the next step is that get next xml node so what are we passing we are passing that iterator to this guy and it returns a document see it returns a document called as next and within next you have this name and node okay so what i'm doing i'm saying branch on next name okay branch on next name so if it is by any chance it's if it's default see it has returned something okay it has returned something see it has returned something okay if by any chance <coughs> it's default then it will go here and then it will convert xml node that particular node which is within this next this node will be converted to a document see now so as the name says xml node to document it will convert that node to a document see here guys if i do the next expand the document see here let me bring it across down title artist cd see here 1985 if i go back here the first one see let me slide it across and let me also bring this guy a bit closer okay so that we'll know okay see empire this guy okay so 1985 10 dot and here it is okay that is what it means so now you understood right why we use this node iterator and now obviously i need to drop this drop this next document here it's not required because anyways we set the moving window to true so now see here now that is the reason i've kept it as re repeat on success because it has to pick up the next document which is nothing but this guy hide your heart puni tyler uk see here let's see this eh? branch on next <coughs> okay now it will convert the note to document and there you go hide your heart bony tyler got it right so that's how you keep on iterating one after the other now obviously there will be some count say here it will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 in twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty six okay so after twenty sixth iteration what happens is that the branch on next becomes null so let me show you this okay I'll put a um let me put a toggle break point here okay see right now in our case the retry is uh, second time okay see what I'm going to do I'm going to skip this okay resume three four five six is looping over okay so 14 let's go to next 21 22 23 24 25 26 see now next has become null which means that it has read all the documents it has read all the documents now that completes our entire code now when this happens i'm going to say that do not go to default go to null because it's null see branch on next slash name it's null that's the reason i'm asking them to go here 
got it right so let's uh, go to null and see what i'm doing here okay it has gone to null and then i'm saying that i'm just dropping unnecessary variables okay actually i, sh I should have dropped i have not dropped anything the expectation is to drop the variables and then exit from the loop in the loop i'm setting the property as exit exit from loop okay which is nothing but this guy this is a loop anyways repeat is a loop you see it's up to you whether you want to exit as a failure loop it purely depends upon the business logic there is no such thing as right or wrong if someone says right and wrong then i think we have a problem no there is no such thing as right and wrong it purely depends upon your business case now exit on loop that's it end now what happens at the end since we are looping over the last value right obviously the 26th value unchain my heart would be the one here see unchain my heart unchain my heart is the one that's kind of <coughs> picked it up over here now you would say you might say that hey you know what i've lost the entire data how can i save the data and everything guys it's obvious right you can use append to document list append to string list you guys have seen that already right you can use that feature called append to document list or append to string list next right next below this step you can do that very well okay so um that's something that uh, i'll try to cover it up but i hope you guys understood how to parse an xml document as usual get the node get the iterator you say you need to repeat as long as the node are available then get the xml node and finally convert the node to document and make sure that you branch it on next or name okay pretty cool now this is here if you can see here i have set it as xml data and in this xml data i am fetching it from here where am i fetching it from here okay so i am fetching it from one minute okay see i am fetching the xml data from here obviously there is another service called get file which we have seen it already you can use get file instead of this guy okay you can use get file here okay but make sure that after you get the file this is converted into uh, this is loaded as string and then to node okay now this is one part of getting from local file guys there is one more service which i wanted to bring it up called as rest of the code remains the same okay there is one service called as load xml node see in the load xml node which is nothing but here okay show you oh i done something okay no sorry okay here you go see, run as show sorry uh, show in package navigator now if you can see that it is just like a, your http kind of thing your http get put post method right see here you pass the url here you pass is xml to true and i'm here i'm loading it as stream see here what i'm passing here i'm passing this xml that is nothing but this guy i'm loading directly from the internet guys how cool is this okay then i'm saying is xml to true and i'm saying load as stream so that since i'm loading a stream right the entire xml what we receive as string will be converted into a stream and that will help to map to here okay so that's the reason i've used a stream okay next rest of them remains the same criteria everything remains the same the only thing that i wanted to bring it up is <coughs> load xml node that's the only difference i wanted to bring it up now see there's also other way how you can append to string list what i'm going to do is that um, i would leave you guys to figure that out how to append to a string list or a document list and see if you can work out with that exercise right um yeah that's it for this particular session and uh, yeah let's see what else we can learn in the next tutorial thank you